Hi, I'm Brent with Festool USA. I'm the product and application trainer here. Today I'm going to be talking to you about setting up the crown stops for our Capex UG stand and extensions. First thing you want to do is when you get your extension, uh, you want to mark where the leg is on the extension. I simply just take a little marker and I'll mark a line right here and right there. Then you want to loosen all of these four screws, five millimeter as everything is with Festool. Simply remove that, take out the nuts that are in there, and then you'll slide the two that you received with the crown stops into this groove. Once you have the screws inserted into the slot on this part, you can mount the bracket. There's a couple things with the bracket. If you look, there is a side with two slotted holes and this side with a fixed hole and the installation instructions. Take the side with the installation instructions, make sure it's towards the front of the extension, not the back where the flag stop goes. Find the nut that you have installed already. Take the long thumb screw, install that one first, and then what I'll do is just, I can slide this back and forth till I can see where the other thumb screw's at. Install that, and just snug them up a little bit. Once the leg's installed, we can fold that up out of the way. We can talk about actually utilizing the crown stops for an added feature uh, when you get the crown stops. If we look at the bottom of the crown stop, there's this bracket on the bottom that's spring-loaded and it has these two tabs. These two tabs will fit in these two slots. When we flip it over, we have a P here and right there. That allows you to make sure that these are aligned correctly. So I just get the slots lined up, push it over, and that's locked into place. From there, I can get the other part of the crown stop with the thumb screw in it, align the thumb screw up with the hole right there, have the P on both sides, and just lightly install that. Now if I rotate that out of the way, I lower the leg for the extension, rotate this back over, and this is the transport position for the crown stops and the extension. Once we have the extensions installed onto our Capex, which is installed on top of our UG stand, if you have any questions about that, you can also visit our YouTube channel. There's videos on how to set those up, get them flat and adjusted correctly for the uh, Capex. Once I've done that, I can work on getting these set up to use them as the actual crown stops. To do that, I've removed the crown stops. I've loosened up the two thumb screws on the bottom. Don't take them all the way out, just loosen them up. Rotate that out. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide it all the way down until it touches the mounting bracket. Tighten your thumb screws on the bottom. Then I can take those same two brackets. They will slide into these two grooves. Once that's slid on, I can take my thumb screw of this other piece installed in here. And if you notice, I'm keeping the P on the same side as the P on this bracket. And once I tighten that down, that's going to pull up on the bracket underneath and lock that into place. This gives me adjustments from one inch of distance from the back of the stop all the way to four and three quarters inches if I slide this all the way out. Once we have this crown stop installed, we can follow the same process on the other side. No difference. Now we can get ready to install our spoil board. To do that, it's pretty straightforward. I can just set it in here, and if you look, it's a little bit too wide for this. So all I have to do is just loosen my two thumb screws on the bottom of the bracket, slide it over, and that gets it close. Next thing I want to do is turn the laser on on my Capex. So if you look at the back of the spoil board, we have a little notch in here. That's to get you close to center. This doesn't have to be exactly center, but I want to get it close. So you can see I'm a little bit off. I'll loosen up the other bracket, slide that over. That gets me pretty close. Now I can slide that one over, tighten down the two thumb screws. Do the same thing over here. Now the next process I need to do is figure out the distance from my fence. I'm going to be cutting this crown in the nested position and that's really where the crown stops excel. So to do that, 
I'll go ahead and put the crown on the capex and I'll make sure the faces are flat up against the fence and they're also flat down on the extensions. Now that I have it secured properly, I can now push my crown stop up against there, tighten it down with the thumb screw, and then do the same thing on the other side here. Now those are both locked into place. Now all I need to do is lock my spoiler board into place. You can utilize either our quick clamps or our standard screw clamps. To do that, I'm just going to clamp the top of the spoiler board to the crown stop itself. Just repeat the same process on the other side. The reason for the two holes is if I had larger crown than what I've got here. The capex can cut up to six and five eighths inch crown in the nested position. With that wide a crown, it's gonna push this back so far that I can actually pass the clamp through that hole and still clamp it to the crown stop. Something else about the shape of the spoil board, there's a reason we did this. Because we cut out so much material here, that allows me to see what angle I have the saw set at without having to look all the way underneath. I can see right where I need to set it, lock it into place. It's much easier that way. We'll set the side of the special cutting depth, which is simply lowering this green lever, pushing the saw back. Now it turns it into a chop saw, so I can't pull it forward and back, which gives me also a greater depth of cut, giving me that six and five eighths inch depth of cut for crown molding. So now I'll go ahead and make my 90 degree angle cuts, 22 and a half, and 45 degree angle cuts. That way it gives me a good reference point when I start cutting my crown molding. Once I have all my cuts in place, I can begin cutting my crown molding. So if we look, if I turn this all the way to 45 degrees, that's gonna be my first cut. Right off the bat, I can't see my pencil line that I have on here because I'm in that special cutting depth. I only put it in the special cutting depth when I'm cutting my spoiler board. And then I'll take it out of the special cutting depth. Now I can line this right up with my laser and get my cut exactly where I want to be. Utilize my clamp and make my cut. Utilizing the spoil board and also having the clamp hold the material in place, it allows me to get nice, tight miters. Another use for the crown stops is to give you more support for wider material like this piece here. I'll show you how to do that. So I'll just take the clamps off, move the spoil board completely. Next step would be to remove the crown stop completely. And then I'll slide this entire bracket all the way down right about here, tighten that back up. And I'll actually invert part of the crown stop. So once I've separated the crown stops, I'll go about attaching it a lot the same way as I did before. First, I wanna put these two tabs in the grooves. A little tip that I've found is if you start it out in this position and then tip it up like that, it's a lot easier to get it lined up. If we look at the bottom, we're not gonna use this threaded hole. We're gonna use this threaded insert this time. So I'll get it lined up, slide it in, because now I can look down through this hole and line it up with this hole underneath, take the other part of my crown stop, tighten that down. So once that's installed, locked down with a thumb screw, it keeps everything out of my way and it allows me more support for wider material. Another tip I wanted to share with you is if you look at the crown stops, we have a hole on each side of the actual crown stop. It's not threaded. So what you can use that for is when you have this piece installed, let's say I don't want to use my clamps or I'm also going back and forth between cutting standard material and crown molding. I don't want to have to readjust this every time. So what I can do is run a screw up through the bottom, attach the crown stop permanently to this, do the same thing over here. Then all I have to do is just 
loosen up from the top, slide the whole thing off, make my standard cuts on my standard material. Then I can just slide this back on, go back to making my crown cuts. I hope this gives you enough information to get started with the crown stops. If you have any other questions about our Capex, dust extractors, any of our other tools, check out some of these videos. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.